In this video, we're going to cover a couple of ways to subtract fractions from whole numbers. Here you'll see four examples. I'm going to show you how to go about solving these equations, and I'm going to also show you how to subtract both proper fractions and improper fractions. Example 1. Subtract 5 minus 2 thirds. The first thing we're going to look at with subtracting fractions from whole numbers is we're going to change our whole number into a fraction itself. We do that by simply putting our whole number over 1. Let's change 5 to 5 over 1. We now have two fractions with different denominators to work with. Typically, what you have to do when you're subtracting fractions with different denominators is you have to put the fractions into equivalence with the same denominator. You subtract the numerators and simplify if needed. Well, today I'm going to show you a trick for subtracting fractions that accomplishes the same thing, but with fewer steps. We can find the lowest common multiple and create equivalent fractions, or we can simply multiply denominators together. Let's do that now. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 becomes the denominator of our answer. Next, we cross multiply the other fractions. The numerator of one fraction is multiplied by the denominator of the other fraction. If you need more help in performing cross multiplication, I'll drop a link in the description to that video so you can have more examples to walk through. Back to the example. Let's take 5 times 3 and we get 15. Remember the product always goes with the fraction that you are multiplying by that numerator. Next, we multiply 1 times 2 and we get 2. We look at the products of 15 and 2 and we subtract them just as the problem is laid out. The result is 13 and that goes over our denominator of 3. 13 over 3 is our answer. If you want to show it in mixed number or mixed fraction form, we divide 3 into 13 and get 4, with a remainder of 1 third left. 5 minus 2 thirds is equal to 4 and 1 third. Example 2. Let's do one more the same way as the previous example. What is 6 minus 3 eighths? We start by putting 6 over 1, which gets it into fractional form. Next, we multiply denominators together to get a common denominator of 8. We then cross multiply 6 times 8 and we get 48. We multiply 1 times 3 and we get 3. 48 minus 3 is equal to 45, which goes over our denominator of 8. 8 can go into 45 a total of 5 times, and that leaves a remainder of 5. That remainder goes over the denominator, and our answer is 5 and 5 eighths. Example 3. What is 12 minus 11 fifteenths? For this example, let's approach it a different way. Let's focus on the whole number of 12. What if we were to write, rewrite 12 as a mixed number? 12 can also be stated as 11 and 15 fifteenths, right? Because 15 over 15 is 1, which can be added to 11 to get 12. We write our problem now to be 11 and 15 fifteenths minus 11 fifteenths. Since the denominators are the same, we can subtract the numerators and get 4 fifteenths. We put the 11 in front of our answer, and the answer is 11 and 4 fifteenths. Example 4. What is 8 minus 6 fourths? So I set this example up for a reason. The number we're subtracting is an improper fraction. What we can do is convert this improper fraction to a mixed number, and then follow the same steps we did in example 3. Let's make our whole number of 8 to be 7 and 4 fourths. Let's also convert our improper fraction of 6 fourths to be a mixed number. That mixed number is 1 and 2 fourths. We now have two mixed numbers that we can subtract. Looking at the proper fractions first, you subtract the numerators and get 2 fourths, which we know can be simplified down to 1 half. We subtract the whole numbers, 7 minus 1, and we get 6. 6 and a half is our answer. So I gave you a couple of different ways to work through the problems when you're subtracting fractions from a whole number. If this video was helpful, let me know in the comments. Click the thumbs up if you liked it, and don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching.